Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to really easily temper chocolate in the microwave and get super shiny chocolate that has a perfect snap to it and how to fix things if they go wrong. Quick shout out to today's sponsor Squarespace and let's get right into this video. So tempering chocolate is basically controlling the cocoa butter crystallization when melting chocolate so that it sets nicely, won't melt quickly, and has a glossy shiny finish, which is really important when making treats or designs for desserts out of chocolate. There's a few different ways to temper chocolate, but today I'm going to be showing you the easiest way. So the first thing you want to do is finally chop up some good quality chocolate. Today I'm using 50% dark chocolate, but you can use any type of chocolate. The only thing is later on when we come to melting it, the temperature that we want it to be at will be different for the different types of chocolate. But I'll post those temperatures below in case you aren't using a dark chocolate like I am. So when it comes to using the microwave to temper chocolate, you want to make sure your chocolate is cut up quite finely and evenly so you don't have some really large chunks and then some smaller ones. You want the pieces to be pretty similar in size otherwise your chocolate won't melt evenly and you run the risk of overheating your chocolate. Now once that's done you want to transfer your chocolate to a microwave safe bowl or container that is plastic as plastic doesn't hold heat like glass or ceramic bowls do so this will just help to keep our chocolate below a certain temperature. Now to temper the chocolate, you'll need a microwave, your cut up chocolate and a digital thermometer. The one I'm using is actually a grill thermometer, but it works really great, which is why I like it. But any simple digital thermometer will be fine. So when using a microwave to temper chocolate, you want to keep the temperature below 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So you want to melt the chocolate really gently. I'm starting off with 30 seconds and once that's done, you can see the chocolate is starting to soften. So I'm just going to give it a mix and then put it back into the microwave for another 20 seconds. These timings may vary depending on how much chocolate you're melting, but you basically want to keep reducing the amount of time you're heating the chocolate, the more your chocolate starts to melt. And it's also really important to keep mixing your chocolate throughout the process. So after another 20 seconds you can see the chocolate has melted further so I'm going to give it another mix and then put it back into the microwave for 10 seconds. So after another 10 seconds you can see the chocolate has almost melted but there are still a few lumps of chocolate throughout which is what we want. And this is the stage where you don't want to microwave your chocolate any further otherwise you will overheat your chocolate. So what you want to do now is keep mixing the chocolate until the little lumps completely melt. This can take a few minutes but just keep mixing and it will come together. Now once your chocolate is fully melted you want to check the temperature with your digital thermometer and make sure it's below 90 degrees Fahrenheit. A few degrees over will be fine and then that is basically it your chocolate is tempered so I'm just putting a little bit of chocolate onto some parchment paper to dry so I can show you guys what tempered chocolate should look and feel like so the tempered chocolate has set and there are a few ways to know that it's tempered so it should come off the parchment paper very easily it should have a beautiful shine to it and it should snap when you break it leaving a sharp edge along the broken chocolate now what happens if you overheat your chocolate so don't worry I'm going to show you guys just how to fix this right after I talk to you a bit about today's sponsor Squarespace Space. Squarespace is an all-in-one website builder with amazing features to help create a stunning website. Now I wanted to show you guys a new feature Squarespace has released called Video Studio, which is an app that helps you easily create professional and engaging videos. Videos are becoming a revolutionary way to drive traffic to your website and increase sales. With the Video Studio app, you can autofill logos, colors, and products from your website, add audio or a voiceover, and easily share across social media platforms. And it's all free with any of the Squarespace website plans. So head to squarespace.com now for your free trial and once you're ready to sign up head to squarespace.com slash cakesbymk for 10% off your first Squarespace purchase. Now back to fixing our chocolate. So for comparison's sake I've just gone ahead first and overheated my chocolate so I can show you what untempered chocolate looks like. So I'm just putting it in for another 15 seconds and once that's done I'm just checking the temperature and at this point it's 120 F so that means the temper has broken and the crystallization in the chocolate is untempered unstable which gives us untempered chocolate. So I'm just letting some of the chocolate dry on some parchment paper and once that's done you can see here that firstly the chocolate is already beginning to melt as soon as I touch it and when I try to break the chocolate it just won't snap no matter how much pressure I use and as I keep handling the chocolate you can see that it's just getting everywhere. 
So to fix this, you want to start off by finely chopping up some more chocolate, about a third of the original amount you melted, which is why, if you noticed, I didn't use the whole block right from the beginning because I wanted to save some in case I overheated my chocolate, as well as show you all how to save overheated chocolate. Now once that's all done, you want to add that chocolate to your melted chocolate and then just keep mixing until it's all melted. This can take a while, but you will eventually get there, and it's important to keep agitating the chocolate by continuously mixing it while you're waiting for the new pieces of chocolate to melt. So this method is called the seeding method, and what's happening here is the room temperature chocolate is acting as seeds, which encourage the formation of the crystals which are needed to stabilize the chocolate and therefore create tempered chocolate. So once that's all melted, you should now have tempered chocolate. So I'm just checking the temperature to make sure it's below 90F and then taking another little sample of it to show you guys a side-by-side -side comparison of tempered and untempered chocolate. So on the right here, I've got my tempered chocolate and you can see it comes off really easily from the parchment paper. And on the left, my untempered chocolate isn't coming off as easily and leaves some residue behind and is already starting to melt on my fingers as I handle it. Now with the tempered chocolate, when I break it, I get a nice snap with a nice sharp edge along that side of the broken chocolate. Whereas with the untempered chocolate, it just doesn't have that same snap and starts to melt all over my fingers. So that's it guys, that's how you temper chocolate in the microwave and how to save it if it goes wrong. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.